Exodus chapter number 33. Let's, let's spend just a few moments here uh, considering the birthday of the church here. Exodus chapter number 33. Look at verse number 11. Some difficult wording here. Uh, I'll try to explain it here in a, in a moment. Exodus chapter number 33, verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again unto the, into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me to know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and that thou hast found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if, thou, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For therein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are on the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. The title of this evening's message, if you want to call it that, is I Want More. I Want More. Father, we bless your name. It's our privilege to be here. Now, we need you to use these next few moments to move us forward. You know what we need, and we ask that you would give it. For we ask it in the precious name of our Savior. Amen. In Exodus chapter number 33, a lot has already transpired in the life of Moses and the children of Israel. We've had the burning bush already, the ten plagues of Egypt, the crossing of the Red Sea, the bitter water made sweet at Marah, manna and quail provided, water from the rock, the giving of the Ten Commandments, the instructions for the tabernacle. And in Exodus chapter number 33, we find Moses speaking to God face to face like a man speaks to his friend is what it says. Now one might be tempted at that point to say, wow, God has really blessed the work and he's blessed us and so just be satisfied. But in this chapter that we read, this portion we read, there's two things that stand out to me that are, I think, of significance. Moses tells God two things. In verse number 15, he says, And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Basically what Moses said is, If you don't plan on going with us, then we don't plan on going. We don't want to go if you're not going with us. And in verse number uh, 13... In verse number 13, he said, now, that's the one thing he said, if, therefore I pray unto thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. What he says there, that if you've got to read that kind of carefully, he says, if I have found grace in your sight, then let me find grace in your sight. You say, what does that mean? <laughs> if I have found grace in your sight, then let me find grace in your sight. In verse number 18, he says, show me thy glory. What he's basically saying is, you have already been good to me, and since you have already been good to me, I want you to be even better. Yeah. I want more. He used the fact that God had already been good as a basis for asking for more. He wants God to show him his glory. And do you know what we find in chapter number 34, the next chapter? This is where we find Moses' face glowing with the pres from the presence of God. Now, on this, our 118th birthday, I have the same two thoughts that Moses had. I have the same two thoughts for this church. The first thought I have is, God, if you aren't going with us, we don't want to go. It's that simple. You know, in the religious realm, there are lots of accomplishments, there's lots of uh, acknowledgments, there's a ways that churches can, if you want to call it, distinguish themselves and improve their standing in uh, and then their, who knows them in the Christian community. 
we're the biggest, the largest, the fastest, whatever. There's lots of things that you can be known for as a church. You fill in the blank, there's all kinds of them. The things that put a church on the map, as they say. It makes them recognized by Christians and churches around the country or even the world. We could, each of us here, name pastors and churches and ministries that, in our mind, okay, they're famous, if you want to call it that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't give two hoots for any of that. If the Lord doesn't go with us, then I don't want to take the journey. Whatever he, wherever he's willing to take us, we're willing to go. But if he's not taking us, I don't care what anybody wants to offer us. We're not going there. If his presence isn't going to go with us, we don't want to go. We're going to where, go anywhere and do anything as long as the Lord will go with us. But if he can't or won't go with us, then we just flat out don't want to go. There's nothing that anyone could offer or potential gain that we could get that would be worth going without the Lord. Now, this should be the unshakable motto of our existence. Lord, we're willing to go anywhere you'll take us, but if you ain't going, neither are we. That should be our unshakable motto. That's number one thing. But I also found in my heart an agreement with Mo Moses' desire for more. He wasn't just satisfied with a long list. And if you, if you were a part of all of those things that, I, that we went through, you know, the burning bush and all that, you'd say, wow, that was enough. That was cool. That was great. But Moses had been through all of those. And what he said was, well, you've been that good so far. Let's see where you'll take us now. I want more. And I, my, my heart finds acknowledgement in that. If we had an accurate record of all the things that God had done in this church over the last 118 years, just think of what a list that would probably be. Things that he did in, the in, in individuals' hearts, things that he did with this collective body, problems that he brought this church through, ways in which he provided, ways in which he used the ministries of this church, and ways that he used the people of this church to bless, be a blessing in this community and all around the world. If we had a list of all of that, it would be quite, maybe even an impressive list. A lot of that was beyond there would be the things we were not, not aware of because we weren't here then. It would be people that we didn't even know because they, we'd never met them. But all through our history, God has been good to this church. And he's done things that we can only marvel about. And we could celebrate 118 years and be satisfied. But the truth is, I want more. But it's not what people might think that a church would want. You know, a church might want more seating space, more facilities, more money in the bank, more prestige in the community. There's a thousand things by which success of a church is measured by others. And most of those things I am totally indifferent to, whether we have them or not. As far as I'm concerned, they don't matter one way or the other. But I was reading an old hymn book this week, the, old, the, the hymn book that we had here when we first came, the Great Hymns of the Faith, the Red Hymn Book, if you've here, been here that long. And I was reading through that this week, and I came across an old hymn that listed exactly what I wanted more of. So I'm going to give you the paraphrased version, and I'm not going to uh, make any comments basically about it. There are 18 things that I want more of. I didn't write these, but the, the man who did well over 100 years ago, I think in 1870-something, he wrote these. Here's what I want more of. I want more holiness. I want more of the striving of the Spirit of God within. I want more patience in suffering. I want more sorrow over sin. I want more faith in our Savior. I want to be more sensitive of His care of me. I want to be more joyful in my service to Him. I want to be more fervent in prayer. I want more gratitude toward Him. I want more love for His Word. 
I want more tears for his sorrows. I want more pain in his grief. I want more meekness in trouble. I want more praise for his work. I want more purity of life. I want more freedom from sin. I want more longing for heaven. And I want to be more used for his purpose. And if we sum this all up, it would say, I want to be more like Jesus Christ. The Lord has been so good to us. And the goodness that he has displayed to us should drive us to desire even more. Not more of the things that don't matter, but more of Jesus Christ. So on this 118th birthday, we have two birthday requests. Lord, we will go anywhere you want to take us. But if you're not going, we don't want to go. And two, Lord, give us more of Jesus Christ. On this birthday, we want more. That's my birthday wishes. <laughs>